Hi, I'm Steve Moriarty from moregems.com and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about using the Bat Lap, which is a final polishing lap. Uh, it has many uses, but I use it to final polish. Um, I generally will cut a stone to comparable to 3000 grit pre-polish and from there I'll polish on the Bat Lap. Now to use a Bat Lap um, you need to clean it and lubricate it. And we do that with WD-40 and a tissue. And after cutting a few uh, facets with the lap, you can see how much uh, uh, material has come off the stone. And, and this is a problem polishing. Once it builds up on here, you'll, your polishing will slow down dramatically. So you need to keep it clean, keep it charged regular. I charge it with 50,000 diamond. And to do that, once you've cleaned it off, you just get your finger a little greasy, dab it in the diamond, and just spread it across the lap. Now it's ready to polish. Uh, this lap's good for many stones. You know, I'm working on a tanzanite at the moment. It works on garnets, tourmalines, uh, most of the harder stones, sapphires, spinels. Um, I don't do quartz on this. I don't do opals on this. Um, but but it's worth trying for almost any stone. Um, I've recently had a situation where I went back to my tin lap just because uh, a tourmaline was very slow on this lap and for some reason the tin lap polished that particular stone quicker but most stones I follow I find that this lap works very well it's harder than the tin lap so it produces a little bit flatter facet and, and it in general cuts faster but you know if you have an issue with the stone you just try something else and, and until you find out what works I generally run at a medium speed. Um, it's probably between 300 and 600 RPMs uh, with this. And you can change the speed, change the direction you polish. Um, all these things can, can vary the speed and the quality of your polish. Um, so you just keep working with it and, and eventually you find a direction. You know, you can work with the lap, against the lap. Um, and all these things affect how it polishes and, and each stone's different and each facet can be different. So you just keep working with it, working different ways with it um, and, until you get a polish. Uh, usually after four or five facets or a row of facets, I'll recharge the lap. You can tell when it's getting slow. Um, just give it a recharge and, and it'll, it'll polish very fast again. So I'll give you a little demonstration of, of how to work with the bat lap. Uh, this is a tanzanite we're also doing a demonstration with. And generally move it across, you know, I, I generally do about a one inch um, working and work it quickly across the lap. You know, then when you take a look at it, if it is liney or uh, you see lines in it, you can move to the opposite side of the lap. This will change the direction that you're polishing. Sometimes I sweep across the middle. You know, you'll, you'll find that every facet can react differently. So the direction you're polishing can, can help the speed you're polishing, you know. Uh, of course, faster will polish quicker. Um, sometimes it works better uh, to produce a flatter facet without lines. Sometimes it doesn't work as well. You know, there's times I'll work this side and then work over here and go back and forth. There's so many different things that you can do that, that change how that, that facet gets polished. You know, right now I've got little dots in it, so it's got to go further. You know, and it's always important to be able to see the facet exactly. I find that a lot of faceters, when they get started, they really don't see 
how the quality of their polish is. So you really got to work to get the light right. And getting the light right is moving it back and forth between where the facet appears dark and the facet appears light. And you can see the little dots in this case. So because I cut in two steps, I, I go from my Raytech 325 Nubon lap to polish. It takes me a little while longer if I went one further step and recut everything on, on a little finer grit. It probably wouldn't take me so long to polish, but I also skip one entire step. Probably going to want to polish uh, from at least 3,000 grit on a metal metal lap because these Raytech laps that I'm using, I don't. I think they've quit making them, which is unfortunate because I'm going to have to change how I polish. Or I should say how I cut. try and get used to the amount of time that you think it takes to polish a facet. The bigger the facet, the longer it's going to take. But I often either count or, you know, that each time you look at it, you lose time. So you don't want to over polish, but that takes a lot to over polish. So you want to leave it down as much as possible and look as few times as possible. So as black as this is getting, it's probably time to clean off the bat lap. Just slow it down a little bit so it doesn't throw everything off. Speed it back up you'll find you'll be polishing much quicker now. And if it seems awfully slow, try going the other side. You're actually reversing the direction that the the lap is going into the stone and it can change the speed at which you polish significantly. Polish facet. What I'm talking about, the difference between light and dark, is when that, that transition between a bright reflection to a dark reflection is where you're going to see the facet the best. And you can see this facet is uh, hopefully pretty well polished. It's not wiped off real well, but it does have a good polish on it. It's smooth, no dots. It's ready to go on to the next. So if you have any questions or comments about using the Bat Lab, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'm Steve Moriarty from moregems.com online and Moriarty's Gem Art on the square in Crown Point.